for you now. Another addition to this Buffalo Bills roster, but not a resigning, not an extension, straight up free agent who came to the Buffalo Bills. Someone who I know he was on the radar for several of us like two yeah. or three years ago when he was coming from the Raiders. Um, I think around the time when Milano was supposed to leave, uh, yep. whenever that offseason was. Um, Nicholas Morrow, who uh, apparently this signing angers a lot of people. I tapped out for Twitter a little bit yesterday as I was doing other stuff, and I came back to see how many people were angry that the Bills signed Nicholas Morrow. Um, but I really like this signing in terms of what he is as a – like. You're looking for him to be a depth linebacker, like linebacker three or linebacker four, and you can do a lot worse than a guy who's been a single caller, green dot type of dude, and has seen a ton of snaps in this league. Right. I mean, former safety, six foot, 225. Uh, so that kind of matches the archetype that the Bills mm -hmm. like, especially if you're talking the weak side backer, the Milano type position. But Morrow can, he's a stacked linebacker that can really play both of the linebacker position. He has that football intelligence to do so. He can play in the box, and he's able to uh, d defeat blocks that are coming downhill at him uh, well enough to do that. 58 career starts, um, 12 with the Eagles last year, 17 with the Bears the year before, and then 11 with the, Ra the Raiders the year before that. So he has experience, and as I said, at different positions. He And he did wear that green dot last year for the Eagles, and you know he actually made a few plays against the Bills, um, last year when they play them. So I'm sure that actually factored into that. But mm. when I watched his film, the the one thing that really stood out was his ability to leverage the ball, whether it was in the passing game mm. or the running game. We're going to show a bunch of those clips. I, we have 11 clips to break down for him. Um, but his ability to leverage the ball, come in under control. So we're so used to seeing those impact plays and tackle for losses from Matt Milano and him just mm. firing his gun coming downfield. And a lot of times, you know, he's going to make one of those havoc plays, a tackle for loss or a strip sack. Other times, he's going to completely whiff, right? <laughs> um, you don't see a lot of that with Morrow. Morrow is kind of that high floor, steady, consistent player. Almost so steady, it's boring mm. at times when you're watching film. You're like, oh, there's another another tackle for a one-yard gain. Like, if there's, if there's nothing flashy about his game. Uh, honestly, I, I would like to see more. But when you're talking about a backup, a rotational player, and you're comparing him to, say, a Dodson, I think his floor is a little higher. And, again, being able to play both those linebacker positions um, is really going to help him um, you know, in this system, in uh, in Buffalo, and just, I think, is a steady player, man, almost to a fault. <laughs> almost I to like a fault. how you – my number one thing that I have in my notes after watching the tape on him, I put, res I put responsible reps. That's yeah. how I kind of, like, classified him in. And I think that's what you get – with him. And uh, for me, I, I started with the run aspect before I got into the film. I kind of looked at some stats and, uh, you know, amongst 90 qualifying linebackers versus the run last year, he was tied for 21st in stops and tied for 19th in stop percentage. Big one here. He also had a missed tackle percentage of only 4.4%, which was tied for the 14th lowest. And again, when you're looking at that depth linebacker spot, Hopefully Dorian Williams, you know, ascends and he can be linebacker three and be all these things that a lot of the fan base want for him or envision him to be. But I love this signing as, again, a linebacker three. If something should happen to Bernard or Milano, you have a guy with all this experience who plays responsibly, who can, you know, can match coverage a little bit um, and, and, you know, process as well. You see him trigger, you see him read and diagnose, and again, plays responsibly. And especially I think if you pair that with, more of a risk taker like a Milano and more of a guy like Bernard who shoots gaps and is aggressive. It's not necessarily the worst thing in the world to have more of a, you know, responsible or boring to death type of guy right. playing alongside that more aggressive gap shooter. Right. And so let's get to some of the film here. Um, and this one is against the Cowboys. So uh, he works well inside the box. Again, kind of an undersized linebacker, but look mm -hmm. at his movement. Uh, in and around the trash here, you see that lead blocker kind of fall down. He just, you know, sidesteps him and goes and makes a tackle on the running back. Does that really good job? Does a really good job of, of, again, you know, working around the trash, using um, his hands at, to, as levers right here. You're going to see that blocker come for him at the next level. They're working the double team right here and they're coming for him. Watch him leverage the ball, leverage his gap, but also do it with using his hands. And it, it's a big thing here because this guy's occupying, and you're going to see that D tackle kind of drift here. He plays off his defensive tackles and guys that are in front of him so well. 
And as that guy comes up to the next level, again, leverage the ball, leverage the hands, disengage, make the tackle. Yeah, it, it's something that the first game I watched for him was against Arizona. And he was letting some of the linemen like get into his chest and he wasn't disengaging and getting off blocks enough. And I was like, oh, this is kind of disappointing. And then the more you watch, especially earlier in the year, and this rep beautiful against Trent Williams that you uh, highlighted right there. Like you see more of that ability to disengage. You see more of that hand usage, that ability to keep himself clean while he's reading and reacting and diagnosing. And I think what's nice too, like these first couple, you just watch, like he's usually in position, you know, yes. sometimes he'll leverage his gap and then potentially get bounced out. This was also a big thing too, like not to get into the Eagles too much. Like their run fits were horrible as the year went on. Like what they mm -hmm. were doing here versus what they were like at the back end in week 17, 18 of the year, which is absolutely wild. But again, it speaks to that responsibility of him being in the right spot, flowing to the football because of his ability to process. And again, I think a lot of that comes from the experience and the snaps that he has under his belt. All right. Here's another play. You talked about being a Simon sound. He's leveraging the ball really well. He sees the ball coming out here. Watch how as Mitch Morse pulls, he just shaves that corner. Mm -hmm. Talk about that with Milano a lot. Shaves that corner, doesn't allow the offensive lineman to get into him. And then now that forces Cook to, you know, cut it back and he's there to make the tackle. You see this type of play from him against run. Mm -hmm. Literally every other play when, when we're talking the run snaps here. And the other thing that really stood out for me was his uh, ability to leverage. But I, I said it's like perpetual motion with him. You see, mm -hmm. he's looking out in front of him. There's a blocker coming for him there. There's this guy trying to leverage him from the offensive line. He avoids both of those guys. Now he's still leveraging the ball. He sees this guy's outside, so he's kind of coming down the pike here. Well, that guy misses, and he's still leveraging the ball. He's able to <laughs> work through the traffic to make uh, the tackle there. This play, when I when I saw this and I said, man, this is a, a great play to really highlight perpetual motion. It reminded me of that movie Copland. You remember that movie Copland? Oh, yeah. Where he's talking – where uh, Ray Liotta's talking on the porch yes. um, uh, to Figs about perpetual motion. If there's a red light, do you stop at it or do you just make a turn and keep going? That is the perfect metaphor for this guy against the run. It, he leverages the ball really well, and he's in perpetual motion. He's not getting caught in traffic. He's not letting guys get on him uh, when you're moving sideline to sideline. And you see it on this play. He just does whatever he can to leverage the ball and to keep moving, to keep in motion, to make that tackle. I was not expecting a Copland reference in this episode. That One is fantastic. Well done. Well done. Um, yeah, and I, I think that really is pretty apropos of like of his play style. And again, the numbers speak to it when he's coming forward and making plays um, against the ball. And I, I just, again, I like the complimentary aspect that he provides. If something, you know, God forbid, should happen to Terrell Bernard or Matt Milano, like having this person who plays in this way, it meshes well, it pairs well with – um, uh, you know, Bernard and Milano style. And here's another one too. You know, you it's highlighted crazy. the double team on Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox is asking for penalty right there as he talks to the ref, but he sees it, he diagnoses it, and he closes down so quickly before that double team can even get a piece of him. And he beats it right over the top and makes the stick in the hole. I just, I love this. He plays off of his defensive lineman so well. And mm -hmm. let's not minimize like the, the D line for the Eagles. They mm -hmm. have a lot of talent. And they kept him clean a bunch. So that will be important when we're talking. If he gets playing time, they do need to help keep him clean. But he does read ahead of the play. Again, combination block here. You see a combination here. And as they're coming down the line of scrimmage, obviously you get flow going this way. He could either shoot this gap right here or work over the top. He leverages the ball. He, he goes with the flow of the play, scrapes over the top, and makes a tremendous tackle. Again, another play here, perpetual motion with Morrow on this play. Watch how he stays moving, works off of his teammates. Mm -hmm. His teammates are, you know, shooting this gap right here. He's shooting that. What's he do? He plays off of that perpetual motion. He goes and makes the tackle on the running back right there. Just fun stuff from, from Morrow. When you're talking the run game, he just is kind mm -hmm. of like continuously moving and working off of his teammates. Yeah, and it'll be, you know, good for him to work behind Daquan Jones and Ed Oliver and Eric Armstead. I'm just kidding. Um, you see those <laughs> movements and, and tracks of the ball and how efficient it is. I, I like that previous clip, Jess. It's it's a direct angle. And again, it highlights that perpetual motion aspect. And here's a nice coverage rep for him. You see him function in some spot drop roles like on this rep here. Um, I did like that, you know, knowing how Philly plays or well, did I, under Desai and everything that was going on before all their wholesale changes. But, you know, you know, he's got some of that match coverage ability under his belt as well. And um, this is a nice rep for him here to kind of get this PBU and make a play on the ball against Lockett in the slot. 
Right. I don't like him in man coverage and same, especially but, against like slot type of du- dudes. Like I watched Michael Wilson for who we loved at the senior oh bowl out of Stanford, like carve it's him up here. underneath. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, and, that's also a tough matchup. Yeah, it is a tough matchup. And uh, so man coverage, uh, not, not a big fan. Some of his own coverage stuff is kind of sketchy at times too, because like this one's good. He's kind of reading that and he's dropping to a spot. Like you said, he's, he's more of a, a, a zone dropper, a landmark dropper, get to a spot and X coverage. Um, and he does that here and makes a good play on the ball. But there are times where he's dropping to his zone, as you'll see, and he really has no idea there's a threat coming through his zone mm-hmm. or, you know, how to anticipate the route. And this is one of the plays here. Now he, he doesn't anticipate routes. Well, whether you're looking at routes or route combinations, as you said, Wilson's a tough matchup here, but with a team like the Bills and even the Eagles, you play a lot of quarters coverage. What did the teams used to do against Tremaine Edmonds? They would get a slot receiver, a a running back, a a jitterbug running back, match up with him and run some pivot routes, some juke routes. And you see that here, wide receiver versus him. And he doesn't anticipate the route well. And it's an issue because he doesn't have that recovery speed. He doesn't have Mm -hmm. that twitch and acceleration to jump that route so he doesn't have those two things going for him and that wide receiver who we loved at the senior bowl like you said um he takes advantage of him on this route and it's again it can be a big deal if you're playing a lot of quarters coverage and teams find out ways to isolate a wide receiver or running back against a guy like morrow yeah that's a nice route from wilson hits him with that little rocker step but he just completely opens him up and there is no to your point kind of sensing what type of route he's going to run, like anticipating the just how open that middle of the field aspect is and kind of protecting that inside a little bit. And he just takes the bait on that first step and it's just wide open. And again, he hit there in a couple routes too, like where, you know, Wilson's just running um, like some whip routes and jerk route type stuff, like you said, and Morrow bites on that first move and right. Wilson's just really open underneath. So here's a coverage the Bills play. Uh, again, they're, they're getting a push call between the tight end and the running back. And so you'll see it, that running back exits out. So now the linebacker Cunningham is taking him and the push call is made. Tight end is now Morals and just watch. He just doesn't anticipate the route, lets that guy get across his face and that's a, a big play down the field. You see these type of plays all the time against him. You know, you saw him as an underneath dropper a bunch and teams were checking it down, running these crossing routes and they were able to separate post catch and run away from him. And again, that kind of comes back to that lack of acceleration or burst and twitchiness uh again a decent athlete overall but he doesn't have that that quick twitch to recover and and make a play at the catch point or just minimize the guy and make the tackle Mm. especially in like the underneath and the intermediate um i saw a couple reps where you know he's carrying dudes on or, or function underneath on like deep posts and overs and stuff and i was like okay like that gives me some confidence but like playing with routes in front of him, he's almost like a different player. And it speaks to your point of like that leverage aspect or the recognition, like especially there on that previous play, like, you know, that push call is coming. That guy is going over and underneath. Like you don't need to be flowing that far over the top to your left and opening yourself up. And here's another one too, against, you know, no disrespect, but not like a premier route running tight end into high Conklin. Although this isn't like awful, but again, it's just falling for that first move, getting put out of position, opening yourself up. And he's almost kind of also like looking into the backfield a little bit as this route is happening. And he just, does that. He peaks when he shoots, yes. right? And it's just weird. And it's like, it's weird to know that he's almost like better covering deeper routes than he is like coming forward and playing routes that are in front of him. It's like, yeah, his eyes mislead him or he just gets put out of position. And, you know, you nailed it. Like he'll be peeking in the backfield as a man is like right here. And rather than reading his man and being sound on his man, He's trying to see what's up. And then I think he's reading that flash of color and, oh, let me go with the first move. And then he's right. caught out and there's just a vulnerability and openness in the middle of your defense. He's again, he's, I think he still raises the floor of the mm-hmm. backup linebacker position. I'm For comfortable sure. with him playing, you know, a few games, two to four games if needed. Um, but when you're talking about him compared to AJ Klein was brought up in the chat, Tyrell mm-hmm. Dotson, who, Dotson had a great year last year, yes, but absolutely. when it came to coverage, there were still some hiccups here and there, but I will say, man, he earned it. Um, I'm surprised he's still on the market, to be honest, but um, I thought he had a great year last year, but uh, the Bills did decide to move on from him, but I still think Morrow, it, it's a really high floor, um, leverages the ball well, as we said, and does a great job of coming in under control, 
to make tackles and for a team that misses a lot of tackles to have that as one of the like signature traits balance poise and control when coming into the tackle like that is a nice uh, set of traits to have for a backup linebacker